Hello, I am Fawad and today I will discuss this code. Uh, first of all, I will uh, create a pointer over here so that I may show you that how each and every line of this code execute. I will execute this code step by step and you will see the results. Uh, at first, I have loaded the previous data set that was uh, grp1.eng. I have loaded this mat file and you can see that there are 14 different uh, variable and structures that I have loaded over here. <coughs> if you look at if you look into the workspace you will see that uh, these variable contain the start data uh, and the length of the start data is 11. Secondly it contain in data variable uh, the sample rate uh, you can see that the sample rate is constantly distributed over here and it is uh, 1000 and there are many other variable like block time and data the most important one is this uh, file that is data if you look into uh, line number eight i have loaded the new data set the new data set contain three more variable look at this uh, the first one is shoulder MEV, shoulder OP, and uh, the marker. These three variables were uh, present in the new data set. What I have done is that I have used all the variables from the previous data set except uh, the data. I have replaced the variable data uh, with the newly loaded data set that is. Uh, signal emg and i have replaced the content of the data variable with the content of shoulder underscore op variable at this line line number nine you can see that these values will get changed after i execute this line of code after i i have replaced the content of data variable with the newly loaded file that was signal emg uh, which is the new data set instead of previous uh, values I will use uh, the content of the newly loaded data set that is shoulder underscore op there is another variable that is shoulder underscore mev uh, I can use both of them uh, but at this time I am using only the shoulder underscore op you can change uh, this variable over here with the shoulder underscore mev and you will see the result of uh, the file number two after that we will execute a loop uh, from line number 13 to line number 17 there is a loop uh, which is used to locate the channel now you can see that there is a empty structure that we have declared over here data Four dot raw. This is an empty structure that we have created over here, and we will load and we will uh, load this structure with uh, different uh, channel values. Uh, the loop will execute for eleven time because the data start, the length of the data start is uh, four cross eleven. You can see over here that is length of this variable is 4 cross 11 4 by 11 here are 4 rows and 11 column but the length is 11 so this loop will execute for 11 times and each time when the loop get execute uh, it will divide the content of the data into different sections and over each section of the data Butterworth filter will be applied and the result will be stored in the data for dot divided at index i and the length of each uh, output will be stored over here at this uh, lineage variable now i will execute <coughs> this loop line by line and you will see that what uh, how the content of the uh, structure data for dot raw changes so after I execute the loop just only for a single time
now we will watch the content of the data for variable <clears throat> you can see that uh, the data for structure contain these two uh, different uh, variable the one is the dot mat and the other is a sil file so the data for dot raw contain uh, 1 by 11950 variable uh, in array with the size of 11950 and the divided contain uh, the output of the butterworth filter it is also 11950 it is another variable uh, uh, which contain the size of the uh, output that is which is 11950 now you will uh, be thinking that now you will be thinking that from where this uh, term 11950 comes off so the answer is that uh, the data start and the data end at row number 4 contain decide the size of these variable so at line number 4 this is the fourth column so this is the data start uh, the data start variable we are uh, from row number 5 and column number i uh, which in this in the first loop was one so in the first column and row number four the value is three thousand thirty five thousand eight hundred and fifty one while at the data end the value is uh, forty seven thousand eight hundred so the difference of these two variables will show that what is the length uh, what should be the length of the first file like over here this is 11950 the start is 1 and the end variable is 11950 so the different comes out to be 11950 this loop will execute for about 11 times and each time you will see that the content of this uh, file will get updated after executing the loop for two times you will see that there are two variables the size or the length of the first uh, output was 11950 while in the second loop there is 139300 and the content of the first loop and the second loop combine together and give an output of size uh, one leg fifty one thousand and two hundred and fifty so this loop will execute for 11 time now I will jump out of this loop step out of this loop and you can see that uh, the size of these two variables have changed here after executing for 11 time you will see that there are 11 different cells and each cells contain the size of the output and this is the total set of output values and there was another variable lengthage it contain the size of each channel at line number 18 this is just a transpose of the data raw data previously uh, the output was just single row now it has drawn by applying the transpose it is just a single column uh, now you can see that after executing this loop uh, for 11 time for each uh, channel the output of the filtered data has been stored in the divided 4 uh, in the data 4 dot divided and the content of the um, original content have been stored in the data 4 dot raw and the length of each file has been stored in the length uh, de variable uh, after creating the butterworth filter response for each channel 
and creating a structure that contain data for data and length of each channel uh, second task is to create uh, to show the output in the frequency domain and show the output of the filtered and raw data in the frequency and time domain so these line will uh, be executed to show you some output in the first out uh, the first line that is line number 21 uh, just only a simple rate sample rate which is 1000 will be copied to the variable fs and you can see that the variable fs contain a variable uh, content of uh, 1000 in the second line a filtered uh, fast forward transform will be applied to the raw data and the output will be stored in the data for dot raw the 50 um, so you can see that here is another output uh, over here in the structure data for and you can see that uh, the size of this is 43 4 lakh 31650 and the data uh, is complex the data type is complex double it contain the imaginary and the real value the first is the raw data uh, this is the filtered response of each channel total number of channel are 11 and this one is just a Fourier transform of the raw data after executing line number 13 this is just to calculate the length of the total data which is n in the workspace you can see that the variable n will contain 43 4 lakh 31650 after executing line number 24 um, you will see the range of the frequency frequency range have been stored in the variable f uh, now i will apply the power on the frequency spectrum uh, that was uh, at the variable raw dot fft so the raw power variable will contain the frequency domain variable that was a set of complex values so mm, these are the absolute values From, uh, extracted from uh, this content and the power have been applied that is 2 divided by n n which is the length of the total content so by applying the power the result have been stored at the data for the raw power variable now you will see the output You can see the first subplot contain uh, the raw data this is a total set of uh, raw data with amplitude from 200 to minus 200 total number of sample are 1000 and this one is the frequency response or the Fourier domain output of the original raw data the horizontal axis is the frequency and the vertical axis is the amplitude output so for each frequency uh, it each frequency has an amplitude which has created a certain bell shape structure over here so you can see that this is just like a baseband signal so this is the result of the raw data and its frequency response this is the original raw data 
the total number of sample are 1000 and these are the amplitude values if you expand this file you can see this is just like a signal like the EEG or ECG signal so and if you look into this these are individual samples and each sample has an amplitude so this was the output of the data before filtering now we will apply a butterworth filter over this raw data and you will see in the next plot you will see the filtered data output so data four dot filter contain this variable contain uh, the filter data a filter that is known as butterworth filter has been applied over this raw data and the output have been stored in the uh, data four dot filter variable by applying the power that is 2 divided by n uh, the complex uh, values have been uh, if I open this file, uh, this is the filter FFT, so it contains some complex values and some sort of things like that. And if you look into this uh, filtered power, you will see that all these variables uh, have been changed, and there is no any complex value. In this plot, you will see the output of the data that was the original data and now you can see over here You can see that this is the set of filtered data. There is no any noise or here in this uh, data. Uh, it is in the time domain and this is the frequency response of the filtered data. Previously, uh, I have shown that there was a data and the data contained some sort of noise because it was just the original content of the data set previously in the previous figure which I have closed right now and this one is the filter data we have applied a butterworth filter on the original data and this is the content of the output filter data and this is the frequency response of this filter data now I'll close this file now the next phase is to calculate the maximum violent, uh, voluntary electrical Maximum voluntary electrical is calculated by applying a Butterworth filter at each uh, individual set of data that was stored in the data 4 dot divided that we have previously created. Uh, the output of the Butterworth filter has been stored in the maxed filter, data 4 dot max filter, and that is over here uh, that we will create over here. You will see that another file that is next filtered has been created over here uh, the MEV that is the maximum voluntary electrical and the RN, maximum RNS variables have been created and each of them contain uh, these values you can see that MEV contain 56.12 Seven seven and the RMS contain eighty seven different values. We normalized muscle activity, uh, which is the data four and from 
the data for an MEV by applying the amplitude function the normalized and RMS value have been calculated and you will see that in this plot the result of the uh, this is the result of the output values normalized muscle activity the original data has been normalized over here normalization means that the maximum value uh, have been uh, converted from 250 to 1 the maximum range of the range of the uh, output values will be from 0 to 1 so the, this was the process of normalization the previous range was from minus 250 to plus 250 now the next new uh, output uh, contain amplitude range from 0 to 1 So this is the normalized total complete set of the data uh, which show the maximum contraction value the percentage of the maximum contraction and the green the blue data contain the uh, normalized uh, filtered data ENG. certain set of label that is fatigue, fatigue 2 and many more variables have been applied over here. You can see in this plot uh, the blue is the filtered data and uh, the brown color data is the normalized total from these two data uh, there was a function uh, that is known as the um, fatigue it is created in a certain set of output and these output have been plotted over here uh, the horizontal axis is the fatigue test and the vertical axis is the frequency the one is the frequency domain output and the other is the time domain amplitude output this was just all the explanation of the